I'm going to show you today how to make a trap drum rack using the Ableton Push uh, that you can use to record different beats and then get the MIDI from them so that you can edit the MIDI if you'd like. Here's an example. Okay, uh, in this uh, video we're going to see how to use the chains in a MIDI effect rack. We're going to use the arpeggiator to uh, create various different rhythms. We're going to use a drum set, uh, drum rack, and we're going to find out uh, each pad is being received on which channel. And finally we're going to map the macros to change the pitch of the various instruments. Okay, let's get started. First of all, we'll drag in a kick core drum set. Now, I'm going to move a lot of these pads around on the kick core drum set by hitting, uh, holding option and sliding. So first I'm just going to slide this kick over here so it's in a, a nicer place for my finger drumming. Put the snare here the hi-hat closed over here and the hi-hat open. And now I'm going to make copies of this hi-hat closed by holding option and sliding it up to the new place. Okay, this is going to be lots of variations of rhythms on the hi-hat. And then I'm going to move a bunch of snares. Snare, hold option and slide it into the new place. Okay, once I'm done with that, I'm going to quickly map all these to the pitch knob. I hit the word map. I'm going to map all the hi-hats to macro 1. So I hit hi-hat closed, pitch, map, hi-hat closed, pitch, map. I'm just going to go straight up the side, hi-hat closed, pitch, map. I'm going to map all my hi-hat closed um, to this one macro knob. That way no matter which um, pad I'm pushing, it's going to stay synced. I'm going to rename it, Command R, rename it, hi-hat pitch. Okay. Uh, I'm going to map the snares to macro 2. Snare, pitch, macro 2. methodically go through it. All right. And then I'll rename that. Command R, snare, pitch. All right, macro three, I'm going to map to the kick, kick, pitch, map, command R. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to hit this little tiny disk and save it into my, um, oh, I, I got to turn the map off, the map button off. I'm going to hit this little dial and save it into my user library so if I ever want to use it again um, it will be there. Um, okay, now I'm going to go to MIDI effects and I'm going to drag a MIDI effect track onto my track. MIDI effect track onto my track. There we go. I'm going to drop an arpeggiator into the MIDI effect rack. Drop MIDI effects here, right into that space. I'm going to open up the MIDI effect rack with this little chain button that will open up my chains. 
I'm going to hit the key button and that will show me that all of the notes on the piano, any of the notes, will come through on this chain. But I don't want all of them coming through. I only want one. I only want one pad to come through on each chain. So I'm going to make 16 different chains and assign them each to one pad. I'm going to turn this long green button, long green bar, to only one note long. Okay? I'm going to be working in this area over here, so I'm just going to slide it over here to get it ready. I've got 16 pads. I'm going to duplicate this 16 times with Command D. Select it, Command D. Okay, got a whole bunch of them. The first one is going to be my kick. So I'm going to click on kick and just slide this so uh, I'm going to hide the I'm going to open the chain button on this so I can see which note is receiving the kick when I click on the snare it says the snare is being received here when I click on the kick it says kick is being received on D sharp 1 so I'm going to move this um, to highlight this, I can get on this one, move this to D sharp 1. D sharp 1. I'll rename this kick. On the kick, I'm not going to use an arpeggiator. I'm going to delete that arpeggiator. The second one will go across the bottom, will be the snare. Snare is on D1. I'm going to move this to D1, rename it Snare. I'm going to take the arpeggiator off that. That'll be just a dry snare. The third one will be the hi-hat open. It is on C sharp 1. I can barely see that. I'll scooch it over just to barely. C sharp 1. Rename. I'm not going to use an arpeggiator on that either. Next one, hi-hat close, C1. Now I do want to use an arpeggiator on this one. I'm going to use just eighth notes. Anytime I hold it, it's just going to repeat on eighth note at the eighth note rate. Okay, enter. Now I'm going to work my way up these um, hi-hats. So the next one I'm going to do, I've started off on eighth notes. I've decided I'm just going to double them all. Um, so this one is E1. And this hi-hat will be uh, 16th notes. All right. This hi-hat, command R. 16th notes and I changed the arpeggiator rate to 16th notes. This next hi-hat going straight up G sharp 1. I will put uh, at 32nd notes. Command R. This next one C2. Sounds like we're playing Battleship. Uh, 64th. Just doubling it. And change the rate. Okay, continuing. Uh, we've done up here. Now we're going to do this one here. We're going to get into the triplet fields. This hi-hat is on F1. So uh, 1 12th. This next one, A1. Command R on 24th. 
this next one. C sharp two. One forty eighth. All right, and now we'll work on the stairs. This one will start off with eighth notes. The snare is on F sharp one. Uh, eighth notes. Okay. The snare will. A sharp one. A sharp one. And this will be sixteenth notes. Okay, good. And this top one uh, will be thirty second notes. It is D two. Getting closer. It's gonna be a lot of fun when we play with it. Uh, snare on the thirty second. And change the rate on the arpeggiator. Great, we're almost there. We got just a little bit more to do. Uh, these will be the triplet ones. So this snare is on G1. Uh, command R, snare, 1 twelfth. Change the rate, 1 twelfth. Next snare, B1. Good. Change three to one twenty fourth. Rename it. Good. And lastly, this final one is at D sharp two. Great. Uh, snare one forty eighth. Change the arpeggiator right there. Okay, don't need this last chain. Great. Uh, now I want to make sure to save this uh, also to this MIDI effect rack so it's in my user library and I can use it at any time. I drop it in and put it on another drum rack in a different project. Okay, the last thing I would like to do is when I play and hold these notes, they're playing for a long time and I end up seeing a long note uh, in my um, right I see a long note but it's actually very uh, many notes so I want to actually see the rhythm so what I'm gonna do is create a MIDI track and I'm gonna get the MIDI from this other track 5 I'm gonna get it from track 5 post effects uh, record it uh, on here and then it will um, give me all those small values okay and so then if I wanted to edit them there it could allow me to you know change the volumes or do interesting things with it okay all right so there you have it that's how to make the um, MIDI effect rack with um, the chains and having each chain only process one pad on the Ableton drum rack. Each chain has a different value of arpeggiator rate, letting you get lots of different rhythms. We um, set up our kit core, so we moved a lot of drums around, so they might be in better places for your finger drumming style, and you can do that. We found um, each chain is being received on a certain note, and uh, that helped us to um, organize it. And finally, we mapped each of these macros uh, using the map button to a different macro knob so we can um, change the pitch on the fly uh, as we wish to do it. Okay, have fun.